to Fiskerati Live. Hope everyone's having a good day. We'll go ahead and get started. So we got actually a action-packed show for you tonight. We actually got a lot of things to talk about. Maybe that's action-packed. Uh, we are going to discuss all things Fisker tonight. And as you can see, I'm joined by my co-host, Jim from OSR Garage down there on the bottom. And we have Matthew from Tesla Tips in the top part of the screen. And uh, yeah, we're talking all things Fisker. We actually have uh, six things we're going to talk about, including answering your questions live. So tonight we're talking about the Fisker Ocean order status and what the, you know, what my experience has been and maybe what some of your experience has been. So I just dropped a poll question for everybody. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, uh, go ahead and check out the poll question. It asks, um, have you pre-ordered a Fisker Ocean? Because that's going to be part of our what's going on with the order status. So go ahead and answer that poll. Um, the next thing we're going to be talking about tonight is Frankfurt's pop-up location, and we're going to review some photos there. We're also going to talk a little bit about the fully charged live coming this Saturday and Sunday here in San Diego, America's finest city. Uh, we'll see if uh, everyone agrees with that. Maybe not. I think it's pretty fine, though. Um, <laughs> number three, we're talking about the latest on the solar sky roof followed by making the Fisker Ocean even better. Is that possible? Can we actually make the Fisker Ocean better? Ah, we got some ideas for you. And then we're gonna talk about the Fisker EV pickup truck and what's going on with that. Um, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna get into your questions live. So uh, we got our chat windows open. So um, go ahead and let us know where you're from tonight. We don't really do that too often uh, where we do it after the fact, after we've already gotten started. So where are people watching us from tonight? That's always kind of fun. I see an, an Atlanta in the house. Can't wait for my order. Uh, where else do we have people from tonight? We got uh, 58 people watching. Usually it gets up a little higher than that. Maybe we'll have over 100 tonight, uh, but it usually takes a little while for everybody to uh, to get things rolling here. So uh, we have a uh, Florida, a Wilmington. Uh, we have uh, Mission Viejo. Wow, that's a new one. I haven't seen a Mission Viejo before. Uh, Palm Desert, very nice. A few in Southern California. Uh, we have North Carolina. Oh yes, we know. Uh, we know Wilmington is North Carolina. Um, Rosanna. Uh, we also we see Indiana and Los Angeles. Noel in Los Angeles. Hello, welcome. Uh, Orlando, Mikey G. Another person from Orlando, uh, Florida, Weston, Florida. Never heard of Weston, Florida. Uh, Wisconsin, San Francisco, North. Norfolk, Virginia. Huh? You guys probably thought I was going to butcher that one. Um, Maryland, <laughs> Greenwich, Connecticut. I could have said Green Greenwich there, but that would have been butchering it. Um, first time I think I've seen somebody from Montreal, uh, but maybe we've seen other people from Canada before. Right, Quebec. We've nope. seen Quebec. We've seen Quebec. Okay, Montreal's a new one. Irvine. Wow, another Southern California uh, watcher here. Brooklyn, Princeton, New Jersey. I don't even know how to pronounce that one in North Carolina. Maybe you can give that one a, a go, uh, Matthew. Sure. I'm going to go Which with Fuquay Verena. Oh, yeah. Fuquay. Fuquay Verena. Yeah, that's okay. about 15 minutes from me. Wow. That's a close one. Um, Philadelphia. Ponto Vedra. <laughs> probably that one. Pont, Pont Vedra Beach, Florida. Ponto Vedra. You... Okay, yeah. there you go. Um, another North Carolina. Geez, you guys have a lot of people from North Carolina tonight. You're bringing the, bringing the crowd, Matthew. Yeah. I haven't seen anybody from Chicago yet, Jim, uh, or Illinois. Toronto, <laughs> again. <laughs> Long Island, New York. Burbank, California. Denver, Colorado. Uh, Fuquay, uh, Steve said. So maybe I, that's the right way to pronounce it. Um, Maryland. And lastly, uh, we have Fayetteville. Never heard of that one probably butchered that too <laughs> so oh, welcome yeah. to the 77 people who are, are tuning in tonight so let's go ahead and start off with our first thing tonight we're going to talk about the fisker ocean order status and oh, one thing we... real quick oh oh go for it go for it first thing we got 77 people in here right yeah we got 77 people. all right you're all here you're all talking and everything hit the like button right now like button oh yes <laughs> hit it. the, hit it. the hit like it. Hit button it. Hey, yeah, we should actually put on our little our little graphic at the bottom. I don't know why it's not there, but there we go. Um, it's actually going to tell you to subscribe to our channel, download the Fiskarati app. It's going to tell you to hit the like button. 
uh, which we, we don't ever ask yeah. you to do at the beginning. So hit the like button and then join us on YouTube tomorrow for the yes. Cohen Investor Conference. That's a new one. I'm actually pitching a show that's tomorrow morning. It's the Cohen Investor Conference. We're gonna live stream it, take notes, do highlights. So that's kind of the latest greatest. That was a, a release yesterday. So we're talking all things Fisker. Um, we haven't gotten to Fisker Ocean order status yet, which is on the screen, but there is an event tomorrow. If you're a Fisker investor, uh, Henrik Fisker is gonna be providing an update on the company's latest business strategy as well as what's going on with Fisker Ocean production, which he said is on time uh, for November 17th. So that's uh, that's the latest there. So tomorrow we get an update. We'll watch that one. That's 10 a.m. Pacific time, and we'll stream it right here live on YouTube. Um, so let's talk about this order status, guys. Uh, have you logged in recently to your, oh, wow, we got a dog. We, we, I've never seen a dog before. Here we go. People like dogs. <laughs> What's the dog's name? She's, uh, this is Xena. She is Zena. half uh, miniature dachshund and half uh, terrier. So she has one floppy ear and one ear that sticks up. Interesting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So did you guys, uh, let's, let me go look at the poll real quick. Um, on the poll, let's stop the poll. I don't even know if people have taken the poll yet. Uh, maybe people can't see the poll. I'm gonna end the poll. I don't see any votes on the poll. So maybe people didn't see the poll. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the poll up one more time. Go ahead and answer the poll if you have a minute. It is, have you pre-ordered a Fisker Ocean? Maybe I did that a little too early. Um, so go ahead and answer that poll, we'll find out. And then you can uh, let us know here in the, the chat, in the comments, if you've seen issues with your order status on the Fisker website or on the mobile app. So have you guys logged into your, uh, both Matthew and, and Jim, have you logged in by chance to your Fisker Ocean account? What have, what have you seen over the last, uh, you know, 24 to maybe 48 hours, 72 hours. I don't know. It's been, I, it's been a few days since I've looked at it. So I haven't, didn't really notice too much difference. Okay. Um, I just had the thing with the, uh, the blue, um, let's see, is it still on there? The blue exclamation. Yeah. The blue exclamation mark, uh, by reservation is the only thing I see different. And I guess it's, uh, says order instead of pre-order now. I think that was, the. Uh, Big difference, right? Got it. Yeah, yeah, that was um, that was based on the email that we received. So if you ordered the Fisker Ocean one, you may have seen an email come around, I believe on Monday, uh, people got it at various times. And the email actually said Ocean one, um, we've updated your pre order status It said, congratulations, your pre order status has been auto updated from the pre-order phase to the order phase. And then it says you're one step closer to owning your Fisker Ocean One. No further action is required from you at this time. Thank you for joining us in our mission to build the world's most sustainable vehicle. So we got that and we didn't think too much of it. We logged into our account, didn't see anything, went over to uh, the Fiskerati forum and we saw somebody show an image of uh, it, it actually showed an image that said, hey, uh, pending. It, it was like red text. It said pending. Um, they had a pending order. Instead of their order, their Fisker Ocean being in the confirmed status, it went pending and it showed uh, orange orange letters. And we thought, oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, that's the first time we've seen that. Didn't happen to everybody. It happened to some people. Some people started to panic. And we said, <laughs> ah, don't panic. It's okay. Um, and we decided, hey, let's write up an article about it. So we published an article. Uh, maybe the 95 people watching us right now have read that article. And I, I detailed four things on that article um, that I found in my account. So there was absolutely nothing wrong. And let me share my screen right now with you guys. So there was absolutely nothing wrong with my uh, Fisker Ocean 1 order. Uh, there was actually some weird things that were going on with the others. So here's what I see when I go into my Fisker account and go to reservations. This is the first thing that pops up. Everything looks fine here, right? I, I pre-ordered the Fisker Ocean or reserved the Fisker Ocean on September 27th. I, uh, what did I do here? I, I ordered it on July 5th, like many of the people probably watching this stream right now. We all got, you know, we were all part of that big email wave that uh, the company sent out. I had to pay an additional, uh, on top of that $250 reservation fee, I paid an additional pre-order deposit of $5,000 like everyone else who pre-ordered the Fister Ocean One. Um, the one thing that I noticed on here that, that changed 
um, was probably at the top. It said Fisker Ocean before, and now it actually says Fisker Ocean 1. Um, the, the reason why I call that out is when we go to the next screen here, um, you see the sport order. So I ended up reserving a second Fisker Ocean. Um, some of the people that, that watch us regularly also pre-ordered a second Fisker Ocean. Um, before, when I logged into my account, it actually said Fisker Ocean as well. Uh, and it was like my second reservation. Um, but now they added the word sport. But as you can see here, and maybe you guys catch this, both you, Matthew and, and, and Jim, um, the reservation date ended up taking my reservation date from the Fisker Ocean 1 uh, reservation or, or pre-order. So it ended up keeping September 27th, 2020. And the interesting thing was I actually reserved the Fisker Ocean on August 7th, and then immediately thereafter, I pre-ordered the Fisker Ocean Sport. So I wanted to show people, hey, you can do it. So I, I did it, and that was um, what uh, was, you know, the, the experience I had. I documented the experience, wrote an article, and that's what I see. So that's kind of the, the, the parts that aren't looking good in my account when I went to the, the Fisker um, website and looked. And then on, on top of that, I opened up the mobile app on my iPhone and the information was totally different. Um, I, I saw, you know, hey, you've, uh, oh, another thing wrong here, I, I just thought of order fee. I didn't order it, I didn't pay an additional $250 or an additional $150. I reserved it for 100 and then immediately pre-ordered it and I didn't have to pay an additional 150 to make it that $250 um, order fee, which is listed in the terms. So I have to true up somehow Fisker and they have to pay them an extra 150 bucks somewhere along the line. So those were the things that I noticed here. So um, I don't know if you guys saw this. Do, do you guys have more than one Fisker Ocean on, on reserve? I don't think you do. No, I don't. No. Okay. I don't think, I'm pretty sure you don't, Jim, right? You just have the one. Yeah, just the one. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then here, let's look at this image here. So fast forwarding to today. Oh, they fixed some of this here. So they actually um, fixed some of my account. Um, as you see now, the reservation date and the order date are actually um, the same as they should be. So my Fisker Ocean Sport order still confirmed, just like my Fisker Ocean 1 order. The only thing here that's not quite right is that order fee. I've only paid 100 bucks because it was my second Fisker Ocean in my account, right? If you order the first one, you pay 250 for the second one, you pay 100 that's where I mean I have to true them up. I have to pay them 150 bucks. Looked at my credit card statement the other day, looked at it again today. They still have to take an additional 150 bucks for me. Um, so that's that's what I've noticed there. And of course, if you see the the order ID, I X out all the my, my order ID. I don't know if I should share the order ID. I know some people do. I don't know if I should. So I probably, probably good for privacy. <laughs> yeah, probably good. Yeah. Someone can call up and be like, Hey, I or send an email. Hey, I've got this order ID. And then my order ends up being canceled. And I'm like, what happened to my order? <laughs> so, so that's why I, I, I exit out. So take a look at this guys. Um, so you, you may have seen this in the forums. Um, here's the first one. So order status is now pending instead of order confirmed. So this was one I've seen. And then I saw another one here. This was somebody who actually reserved their Fisker Ocean uh, from Europe on November 29th, 2019. One of the first, one of the first. And uh, they they ordered it. They were a part of that big wave of emails and they ordered pre-ordered their Fisker Ocean on July 5th, 2022. Um, so they were a little bit shocked, a little bit anxious as to why their order ended up, oh, and it's kind of being blocked here. So let me uh, zoom in here and we can see this. Oh, zoom in, maybe we can see that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can see it a little better. Let me remove some of that stuff off the screen there. So I don't know how many people have gotten this. It'd be good to know in the chat, you know, what is your order status like? Um, and I'm looking at the poll again and uh, let's see. Still, no people have taken the poll. Maybe I'm on the wrong. The they wrong. Said they uh, can't see it. Oh, I'll be darned. That's bizarre. Oh, you know what? Huh, that was stupid. Um, okay, that was my bad. That was my bad. I totally botched that one. Um, <laughs> let me let me uh, go to the correct um, live stream. That was uh, that was the first uh, mess up here. Okay, let's go ahead and check this one out. Here we go. Wow, sorry about that, everybody. That was pretty pretty awful. Um, still gonna do the same poll, and we'll see uh, what people what people say here. Did you? Here we go. Boom. 
All right, there we go. Now we have even more people to take the poll, guys. So now we have, I don't know, over 100 people. So um, go ahead and take that poll. Um, let us know if you ended up, uh, what your order status is like in, in your account. So um, on Monday, I ended up reaching out to the company and I wanted to find out um, if they were going to fix this. And they, they wrote back basically and said, yes, we're going to fix it. We're aware of the technical issues. We have no additional details other than that, other than um, I've been reassured that the issue is going to be fixed. And that um, is, is the latest that we have. The issue from people's uh, order status, if you're having an issue, Fisker's aware of it. I detailed it in a post and I shared all the issues that I had. As you can see, some of the issues have already been corrected. So they're on it. Um, sit tight, don't be anxious, don't worry, don't panic. That's kind of the message of tonight is around the order status. Hey, there's issues company's aware of it. They're fixing them. Don't worry about it. So I don't know if you guys have anything else to say, Jim and uh, Matthew, um, but that's uh, that's uh, where we're at with the order status. <laughs> we got an auto update and it yeah. jacked things up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, uh, that's where we are. That's where we are with the order status. What are people talking about? Are they did they end up having any issues with the order status? Says um, Ocean One paid pre-order 724 status is still confirmed. That's good. Um, yeah, it's it's only seems to be happening to a, you know a, a small number of people. Um, in in uh, you know the comments of, of the article I published, some people said, "Hey, I've had the issue." Other people said, "I don't have any issues." On the forums, people don't have issues. Um, so it's a hit or miss. You know, maybe it's edge cases. Like for example, my my order, I have two. Um, reservations. One got converted on July 5th. The other one got converted on August 7th. Maybe that screwed things up. Who knows? Company's aware of it. They're fixing it. Um, Rosanna um, says pending also. Now, Rosanna, did you get a Fisker Ocean one? I believe you did. Um, let's see. What else do we have? So we got a, a few people in here. So there's people can these, probably relate. Decentralized raw. He has... He said, so I read the, so it sold out in 2023. Are new reservations being taken for the 2024 model? Um, and, no, you know, I, I Reservations are I open doubt across that they the are. board. Well, reservations are open across the board for all countries right now. So you can keep reserving a Fisker Ocean. Okay. We have over 58,000, we, we being Fisker, right. Fisker has over 58,000 reservations. Um, so the company's still taking reservations, whether you end up getting to pre-order at the end, you know, whether you get to pre-order on November, what is it, 18th or 19th, if you're in Europe, or if, you know, the company decides to open up um, pre-orders again for the extreme here right. in the United States, maybe they will, maybe they won't, who knows. Or if the company, uh, you know, ends up opening up pre-ordering for 2024, the year 2024 at the end of 2023. Um, get your reservation in so that when you do have the opportunity, if you want a Fisker Ocean, then you, you're in the queue and you're, you're good to go. Um, most people, right. let's, so let's look at that poll now. I uh, saw that uh, Henrik said, I think it was just the other day, that he um, said that they were talking to Magna about seeing if they can ramp up more than what they initially thought and if that's the case then there could be some pe more people could end up getting a 2023 model if they see that they are able to do that they may open up ordering for more for next year yeah so, so, so would... production capacity for 2023 is 50,000 units that's been confirmed by the company um, they are looking as they said to expand production potentially here in the United States uh, with US production we don't know too much about it, but there was that interview, I think it was on Friday with Henrik Fisker uh, on Fox Business News. And he actually said that he had breakfast with the CEO of Magna and they discussed um, production right here in the United States. And I believe from what I've read, there's been about there's about 50 um, facilities or so that Magna owns right here in the United States, but none of them do production. None of them are owned by Magna Stara, um, which actually assembles the cars. They're all, um, par, you know, part manual, you know, they, they, as, yeah. you, as you all parts. know, maybe, yeah. you know, yeah, they all, they all do parts, right? Yeah. They all make parts. They're the, Magna is the fourth largest parts supplier in the world, right? So, um, 
the you know they have all these facilities here in the United States, and um, I don't know how many they have up in, in in Canada, but they have I believe 50 from what I've read here in the United States. Maybe they could convert one of those to uh, an assembly plant. Mm, probably not, but maybe who knows? Um, I would say your guess is probably as good as my guess. But that's um, that is definitely on the table. So um, to answer that person's question, you know, the company's always taken reservations, uh, so you can get yours in now and, and be you know fifty eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine or whatever <laughs> whatever it is, um, it's up there. So yeah, so um, if if uh, if people are are uh, wanting to get more information about their order status, or they have questions about their order status, um, if you're not um, if, if you still feel a little anxious and you, you want to have the company confirm to you that maybe uh, if you do have a pending order now when it previously was confirmed, you can always write support at FiskerInc.com. Get it in writing. I would say if you've paid you know, your pre-order deposit, whether it be $250 or $5,000, there's you know, a, a written record of it. Uh, so you, you're, you're good to go. Um, but, you know, just sit tight. The company's working on the order status. We don't have any more details. As soon as we have the details, we will post them. Um, maybe we'll end up getting an official statement from the company and we'll do an article about it. Um, options out there if, if they want to do that. I'm always happy to publish, um, you know, press releases and other in interesting information that the company wants to share. So um, that's, uh, that's what we know there about the order status. Let's jump to the next thing. The next thing on the list, Frankfurt. Frankfurt pop-up location. Did you guys see any photos about this today? Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw some. What'd you think? I look good. It's actually the spec that we are gonna order our Ultra at, uh, you know, minus the solar roof and all that, but it's the same color that we're planning other than until we see the new colors, what they actually look like. Uh, but we're planning on the silver with the sea salt interior. So that's pretty much what ours should look like. Yeah, right there, right, right there on the screen. We have the silver lining. What do you What do you think, uh, Matthew? Did you Did you like this one? Yeah, I do. I, I in fact, I think silver lining is like uh, my second or third. Uh, I mean, it's my second favorite of the initial colors. Um, yeah, I do like it. Yeah, I, I think it's a beautiful color as well, especially with the sea salt interior. It looks It looks really nice. Um, I'm, I'm totally digging uh, the, the sea salt interior. Like this might be one of the best photos I think I may have seen of the sea salt interior. Uh, have you date. noticed that the sea salt seats don't have the, the blue, you know, the center stripe I thought was blue in some of the other samples? It, it, it is on the website, right? It's that really, yeah, I don't this know, looks know what more they call like it. Black or, or gray. You know, they call it teal actually. I think it's called teal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's darker. That's right. So, so this Fisker Ocean appears to be, now I, I could be totally wrong, but at every other pop-up location on the European tour, we've seen oh. the silver lining Fisker Ocean. However, I don't recall seeing lots of photos of the interior. Um, when it was in Copenhagen, it was at, um, it was in some in, indoor location. I can't think of the name of the place, but a lot of people took exterior photos. They, they did have that little kind of I don't know what it was called. It was like a metal bar around it instead of like a rope. It was like a metal bar around it. Um, the same thing went uh, when it was uh, in one of the airports. I think it was at Hamburg Airport and they had it behind like a glass wall. I don't know what it's a glass wall maybe, um, but you couldn't get up close to it. So now they're letting people get up close to it. This particular uh, event here. So this is in Frankfurt. It's at a mall and I'm going to butcher it. It's probably not called my Zale, but that's how um, I read it being here, uh, you know, in the United States. Um, one thing I found interesting on this photo, you see a, you know, a power cord going up and I'm guessing that's to keep the battery charged, but I'm not sure uh, because they do have certain elements on the vehicle um, using electricity all the time. So to prevent it from getting drained, maybe that's what that, that cable's there for. Um, but yeah, there's a, a cable down there on the bottom. Uh, let's see here, maybe I can do that. There we go, we see the cable a little better. And then we go to the next uh, image. You see a little bit of the solar sky roof up at the top. Um, the stripe down the middle looks definitely black in, mm -hmm. in this. Maybe there's, uh, a, a, I, I wanna say there's a hint of blue on the, on the far right side, but that's probably my, my computer playing tricks on me. Um, Got to get real close up in here. No, I think, yeah, maybe that's my computer plan tricks yeah, on maybe, it. Maybe the interior lights. 
Yeah, could be. But you can see they have that little, uh, the, the speedometer uh, gauges lit up. So they have that power cord probably just feeding the, the car electricity is. Uh, it looks like there might be another light on up at the top there on the, on the <clears throat> ceiling as well. Um, just so the battery doesn't die. And then you got this cool, uh, you know, uh, display marker here that they have right out in front of the Fisker Ocean to try to draw people's eye. And as you can see, it's sitting next to a, a Dyson store. So Dyson, I didn't even know they made Dyson stores. We see Dyson products all the time, uh, which I love. Uh, we have our Dyson vacuum. But you see the Dyson over there. I don't know if you guys caught that, but that my eye initially went, oh, Fisker. And then I looked at Dyson in the background and I was like, I love my vacuum. Um, but they have some amazing products. Talk about an innovative company, um, Dyson. Wow. Um, some really cool. I love their their fan that they have without the blade. And they were the supposed to have fan. an EV too. Were they really? Yeah, I last year. No, I didn't know that. They, they uh, I think it was announced like two years ago, but they canceled last year. They were supposed to come up with an EV. Oh, wow. And then you see in the oh. background, I think we have a Starbucks in a van store. <laughs> so, Sean, I, I mentioned this earlier when I was emailed you. Um, if you can go back to a picture of the seats. Okay, yeah, I think we're going to, we'll come right back up on one, I think, here in just a minute. There you go. Uh, is there that one from the driver's side? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, give okay. me one second here. I'll just flip through them and then we'll, we'll get back around to the to the beginning. There we go. Just kind of flipping through for the people who haven't yeah. seen them. It, it basically is, you know, the same Fisker Ocean we're seeing tour all the different European cities. It's been in Berlin, it's been in Hamburg, it's been in Copenhagen. Uh, it's probably been in other places. Those are the three that I can think of. We're now in Frankfurt. And then it sounded like it was going to go to Cologne, uh, Germany as well. There's no specific date on when it will be there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm digging this uh, silver lining now. I see it yeah. again and I see the interior up close. And then it has the slipstream wheels with the Potenza tires. Uh, that looks nice. And then the We're taillights. Gonna... So, so one thing here, somebody said, um, a couple people pointed out uh, with various uh, with various prototypes. And this prototype was probably, if it's the same Fisker Ocean that's been touring Europe, it's, it could be over a year old, right? Just like the Big Sur Blue one that was at Pebble Beach or, or, or New York. Um, so one thing that's really interesting here, my eye shows that the tailgate or the lift gate um, lines up with that rear quarter panel. So a lot of people have been sticklers with um, making sure that everything lines up, all the alignment of all the body, um, you know, metal or whatever it's called. You guys probably know the term better than myself, but making sure the tail lights and the lift gate and all the different lines line up. And here to me, this, this prototype so over a year old, it, it looks pretty solid. I think everything lines up rather nicely um, on it. So we'll flip through more that that solar sky roof. I, I'm I, you know the ver the verdict's out for myself on is that pattern of all the uh, you know the solar panels, the semiconductors, or whatever those you know squiggly lines are. Wonder if those are going to drive my eyes crazy. I don't know. The, the the verdict's out on that one. We won't know till we're we're driving it. But um, it doesn't seem to to have much of a, an issue with the shadows uh, and the light from above indoors of that mall. It's on the first floor of Mysale Mall in Frankfurt. So um, take it away, Jim. What what do you got here? Okay, so these seats. If you notice, there isn't any stitching. And there isn't any, um, you know, from the bolsters on the sides, usually they're stitching running down through the sides. As you see, there is none of that. That's and right. this is Magna's seats. They are called a freeform and they are a molded seat and they can be molded in various different ways. So any car maker can decide how they want their seats to be molded. Got and it. they have these molding moldings and then they have these covers that go over them and instead of being stitched on they are basically like vacuumed on to it <laughs> and they have a zipper lining and hooks that hook it all into place so it stays where it's supposed to be and that way they say if this is the same ones then they say you can actually take those covers off and wash them and wow. put them back on. That's um, very interesting. Yeah, so I'm not sure about the covers. Possibly may not have that, but the seats themselves are obviously, they are the molded seats instead of having 
leather stitching and everything where crumbs get stuck in all the stitching and everything like that shouldn't have any of that problem yeah and i've heard i've heard fisher talk about that before around no seams in the interior and how that was yeah. going to be something that was very innovative for their vehicle so is are you are you you know you may know i i don't know is this the first time that we're seeing um seats in a production vehicle without any uh stitching is that kind of like a a new thing I, that... from what i know yes um but i but there will probably be coming forward from now on um i think this companies. year yeah i think this year was when they kind of introduced them um at I don't, I don't remember which it was some north america um thing i think the detroit auto show okay like, uh, I think that's where they were having them and that's where they yeah. introduced them so i Got would it. expect to see them shortly in, in yeah. every vehicle so you do see some stitching right there on the headrest but when you get down to the bottom and there is a single line of stitching maybe on the far right um on that particular seat very faintly um but maybe that's uh less than the normal I think yeah. like i said little... it, it, yeah, I would say it may not be the exact free form one, but it yeah, does yeah. look like it is the molded pretty, seat. Pretty thing. neat. Yeah, that, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. So, so the crumbs. So, it, you know, speaking of crumbs, we're, we got the uh, we got the taco tray uh, for the people that have the Fisker Ocean <laughs> One and the Extreme. Maybe other people might get a taco tray. Who who knows? Um, but definitely the driver side will have the taco tray on the Fisker Ocean One and the Extreme now. If you're using the taco tray to eat, maybe you're gonna get less crumbs on the seat. <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe you will. Or maybe that's what that channel running down the center of the seat is for. Maybe right. that's to collect all your, all your crumbs so that it doesn't, you know, you don't sit on them. It goes to the center of the channel and then you can brush them down onto the uh, sustainable floor mats that um, you can purchase as an accessory for the Fisker Ocean. So you have those uh, sustainable floor mats, um, you know, which we have, uh, we have pre-ordered those as well. I'm talking about the, and them calling it the taco tray. And I know Hendrick's the one that call it a taco tray. Yeah, yeah. What I want, I'm waiting to see is when they do a review of this with uh, Rady's Rides. I don't know if you guys have seen him. He'll, he will probably one. call it a Twinkie tray. Okay. Be, yeah, I don't he likes know to put Twinkies everywhere. Yeah. So so the next thing that we got is fully charged live San Diego. So we wanted to throw that out there. We, we mentioned the Fisker Ocean. It's in Frankfurt right now. It'll be going to Cologne, Germany uh, next. And then so Frankfurt, Germany, Cologne, Germany. And then we have the San Diego event fully charged live on Friday, excuse me, on Saturday and Sunday. I believe that's the 10th and the 11th of uh of September. So we're going to be headed down there um, in the email that the company sent. I don't know if they, they it sounds like they just blast those emails to everybody. Um, so the Fisker Ocean, it said there was going to be a Fisker Ocean test vehicle. And in previous emails, they've actually said you're going to get to experience it. Um, whereas I didn't see that wording mentioned in this email. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've been told from um, other um, reservation holders, people who've pre-ordered the Fisker Ocean, that they've confirmed with Fisker that they're going to be able to actually sit in the vehicle. I haven't seen anything like that come from the company yet. So I'm going to say um, for now, uh, who knows if you can sit in the Fisker Ocean in San Diego at Fully Charge Live. Um, I'm, I, you know, will be over the top excited if I am able to sit in the vehicle. But if I'm not, uh, I'm not going there thinking I'm going to be able to sit in it. So um, my expectations will, they will exceed my expectations if I can sit in the test vehicle. And the question is, is what test vehicle is it going to be? Is it going to be Henrik Fisker's test vehicle that was on the East Coast uh, the other weekend? Or is it going to be the solar orange test vehicle that we've seen? And who knows how many they have now here? Um, maybe they yeah. have a lot more solar, you know, solar orange and blue planet test vehicles that we haven't seen yet. Who knows? Do you guys, uh, w if, if you were in the, the surrounding area, um, would you end up going to the, the fully charged live or... Um, have you seen enough Fisker Ocean so far? You, you, you've got, you're, you're good to go. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's quite a long flight for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And an even longer drive, yeah. right? And yeah, even I drive. actually, I actually got an email from them um, asking what electrical vehicle they're going to drive to the show. And 
were asking they're asking that was from for fully charged vehicles. live though right that was from fully charged yes. live right yes yes, yes. But, yeah so yeah, they were asking got... you know for people to volunteer to leave their cars there so people could actually take a look at them and stuff and have them lined that's up a, I, was like, I thought that was interesting that's a pretty good yeah yeah that is That'd interesting they, they have like too. a they have an electric alley, I suppose, or what they, yeah. what they, I think it was called electric alley, and they wanted to round out their, uh, round out their, you know, uh, the cars that are on display. So uh, that, that is a neat thing. It makes sense. Like if people are driving electric vehicles, why not put it on display as long as, you know, there's a, a rope around it or, you know, people don't put their greasy fingers all over it, then I'd be fine showing my, my car there. But the, the electric vehicle that I have in the garage, everybody's seen it, so it's not too exciting. <laughs> that is the Fisker Ocean, right? I do have the Fisker Ocean sitting in the garage right now. Everyone's seen it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, okay, so I, I have the Tesla Model Three in the garage. Everyone's seen that. Um, so let's talk about this one. So this is a this is a new one. Let's throw this on the screen here. So. Um, Fully Charged Live, maybe I'll see you there. Go ahead and, and join us. Um, let's talk about this uh, post that, that Fisker did earlier today. He said, uh, let's see, what did he say here? He said, look at that solar roof. We just calculated out it will provide an average of about 28 miles per charge added to the 350 mile range. Start a production SOP on time, November 17th this year. Hashtag Fisker, hashtag love, EV, ZSG, Fisker Ocean, hashtag solar. So I saw this, this I don't know, later this afternoon, or earlier this afternoon, I should say. And I thought, wow, 28 miles per charge. Wow, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, what if I charge my vehicle every day? Will I get even, even, more, even more mileage? Um, <laughs> probably not. Um, so I don't, I don't quite know what their, um, their calculation they use to figure this out. I'd love to know what calculation they use. Um, I tried to do some, you know, uh, back of the, the napkin math and, uh, I couldn't quite figure out, um, you know, how, how they're, they're calculating the 28 miles. So it'd be interesting for them to share that with us. Um, but regardless, an additional, I think they said between 1,500, is, isn't that right, Matt? 1,500 to yep. 2,000 additional miles per year. And what does that come to? It's like four, four to About something. four miles, yeah. Yeah, per, 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 day. per day. So um, 28 miles per charge, if it was four miles per day, maybe they're thinking you're going you're gonna to recharge your vehicle once a week, seven, seven day, every seven days. Um, that gets you to about 28 miles um, per week. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, if, uh, you know, if uh, I'd love to know what, what you guys think. So so basically, if you have, um, and I'm just doing the math here on in my head right now again. So you have the, uh, you know, four miles per day, seven, uh, you know, times seven. Uh, you're at 28 and then 28 times 52, you're at 1568 uh, miles. So maybe they're thinking you're gonna, you're gonna charge once a week, maybe. Uh, so you're driving 350 miles per week. On top of that, you get an additional 28. So you're at 378 miles. Pretty good. Um, so what do you think about if you have 22 inch wheels, uh, Matt or, or Jim, you have 22 inch wheels. Now you're making up for that, you know, the loss of yeah. battery range, yeah. right? With the Probably about 5%, I'm guessing and that those yeah. wheels are going to yeah. lose. Sounds about so you, right. you end up making it up now with the, with the, uh, Probably. that 28 miles, assuming you have a Fisker ocean one or a Fisker ocean extreme because your ultra or your sport aren't coming with a a solar sky roof so yeah. that's uh that's the big one there um so 22s on a fisker ocean one or a extreme uh with a solar sky roof you're going to end up being net positive um with with the mileage there assuming you are getting that four miles per day or 28 miles per charge that would be one charge per week of 52 weeks you end up with 15 just over 1500 miles now that assumes you have um pretty good uh, you know, uh, you know, access to the sun, I would say, um, as I mentioned previous on previous, um, uh, episodes that we do of this live stream, I park my vehicle in the garage all the time. 
So I'm not going to benefit very much from from the solar sky route on the vehicle. So that's kind of crappy. Yeah. Where, where do you guys park your cars? Do you park them in a garage outside in the driveway? Where do you put your cars? <laughs> my wife's ID four is in the garage, and my truck sits outside. Okay. Yeah, both both our main cars are in the garage. Very nice. So you're going to have to create some sort of a uh, up in the sky. You're going to have to create yeah, one a, of those like garage skylights. skylight, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a charging yeah. skylight. Hey, for I got us. some. Uh, I got an update oh, go for, for you. It. Yeah, by the way. Um, I just noticed on that uh, Instagram post today, somebody actually followed up and asked Henrik a question. Ooh. Let me bring it up on my screen. Yeah, please do. I got it here somewhere. We love uh, the, the questions that are that are asked on all these social media sites. Yeah, so what somebody did is, now I gotta find it. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Now I lost it. Let me see if I can throw it up here. Oh, here it is. It says, it? Uh, somebody said 28 miles per charge. What does that mean? I assume within a certain time at a specific sunny place. And then Hen Henrik uh, responded, no, it's a complicated calculation based over one year, average use, etc. We will put calculation on our new updated website coming at the end of October. Wow. So I guess That's we get some more info on yeah. the solar roof in October. That's a lot of information right there in an in a answer on a social media site. Yeah. So the calculation. So, so with with I, earlier today when I was doing my napkin math, I couldn't figure it out. Um, and then just doing it with you, uh, Matt, when when Jim ended up, uh, I don't know where Jim went there a second ago, but I was running the numbers in my head, and it was four. You know, we were saying four miles of charge per day on average, right? And that would be your fifteen hundred miles at the low end, right? Uh, so four four miles per charge per day with the solar sky roof, and then you have seven days. Uh, you know, you end up with your, you know, 28, four times seven, 28. And then you end up uh, multiplying that by 52. You're at like 1500 and I don't know, 60 miles, 1550 miles. So um, that's like the non-complicated calculation. I'm sure, sure it's much more complicated than that based on, you know, how much sun do you have? Do you have, you know, you live in a, a cloudy yeah. climate, a gray climate. Um, who knows? So that'd be interesting. We get more details at the end of, of October with a new updated website. Um, so maybe that new updated website, um, speculating here, that new updated website will also include the new configurator that we're yep. looking to get um, in October as well. So that might also come at the end of October, potentially. Um, that's interesting. Very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. That's good. That's good stuff. Yeah. So the only thing that's kind of deceptive yeah. is that he says uh, he says per charge. Now that just depends. You know, I may charge today, and I may take a trip, and may have to charge tomorrow. Am I going to get another twenty-eight extra miles just because I charged another the next day? Also, yeah, I kind I of it, uh, I it like that at the beginning. I I don't think so, yeah. but. It's going to be based on that 1500 to, to 2000 and they're just trying to figure out an easy way for people to, to figure it out. So yeah. it'll probably have an asterisk on whatever calculation and then you look down at, right. the, at the bottom of the page and it'll say, this is how we calculated the you know 28 miles per charge. And maybe it is assuming like our, our basic math calculation that it's one charge per week. So the average person right. is driving yep. 350 miles. Really yeah, 350 miles per week times 52 weeks and you're at um, a lot of miles. So I don't know if that would work actually. You're at 18,200 miles at 350 miles per week. But remember this, you're not usually charging your battery at 100% capacity at yeah. the time. Right, it's that could be 80 just 80% 80 or something. Yeah. So that makes the calculation a little bit more complicated, but I don't want to spend the time uh, boring <laughs> everybody doing 80% of 350 and all that fun stuff. But um, right. we can do math a math show another night. <laughs> uh, now I'm just dying you know. to know what this calculation is. 280. Okay, here we go. I'm kidding. Um, we'll do we'll do the math another time, and and maybe we'll just wait till the end of October. But <laughs> thanks for sharing, Matt. That was that was yeah. good stuff. Um, so let's talk about this now. Um, we ended up doing a post. Uh, 
last, I don't know what it was, Saturday or Sunday, and we, we did this post about making the Fisker Ocean even better. Um, I, I was trying to think of what, what can I write about? What's interesting for the day? I try to write one article a day. Many, many of you may know that, maybe you don't know that. I try to write at least one article a day. And the, you know, I was, I was kind of having writer's block and I was like, what should I write about? And um, I started looking around at all the different feedback on Instagram, like you see in the comments there that, that Matthew brought up that one question. A lot of people dump you know, their feedback in the comments there. Same on Twitter, on the Fisker account. Um, they, they do it on LinkedIn as well. And so I look at those sites and then I look at the Fiskarati forums and I went through all the comments, believe it or not. I have uh, on our on the Fiskarati site, there's a section when I log into the admin, I have all the comments and there's like, I don't know how many comments we're at right now. It's like 1500 and something. It's a lot of comments. And I started going through all of the, the ones most recently um, after we've seen the vehicles be at these pop-up locations. So um, people have been able to kick the proverbial tires, they've been able to sit in the Fisker Ocean. I'm thinking, what is, you know, what's the feedback? What's the, you know, the, the you know, the, the anecdotal, um, you know, feedback? What are people saying and things like that? So um, I, I wrote an article and there was four themes. Oh, Jim ended up jumping off there. Maybe he didn't. Are you supposed to jump off there? Or are you back? You're back. Um, so the, the feedback, there was actually four themes of the feedback. And let me share my screen with you guys. So um, we're going to go through those themes and we'll talk about them. Let us know in, in the comments, in the chat, what you think how you would make the Fisker Ocean better. And we'll see if it aligns with what we talk about here. So we have a hundred people on the stream right now. Thank you all for joining. If you haven't already hit the like button, please hit the like button. Um, I'll actually count down from five. Or maybe we'll all count down from five. We'll go five, four, three, four, two, three, one. Two, oh, Jim, one. Jim's got a delay. <laughs> that, didn't work. That, did, that didn't work. We have got a delay. You've got a delay on yours. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right, hit the like button. Thank you all for hitting the like button. If you hit the like button, if you didn't, uh, then you didn't. Um, so uh, that, that'd be great of you to, to do that. So let me share my screen here. I got sidetracked. Um, we're going to share the screen. And here's the first one. OK, what do we got? So we have, how can we make the Fisker Ocean better? So many, many of you have probably read this article. Um, it was, uh, you know, you know, taking all the feedback and looking at it and trying to find the themes. And, and probably the biggest one that I seen was more 20 inch wheel options. So we're looking right now at the, uh, on the screen, here we go. We're looking at the F3 uh, slipstream in black. I'm guessing it's black painted alloy with those uh, carbon fiber inserts. That's actually a really beautiful wheel. In my opinion, I would take that one um, I'd just be paranoid if I scratch the wheels and then you see silver showing through, that would drive me crazy. So I probably won't go with that option. I'm still going with uh, playing it safe with the air glider, um, the silver air glider, uh, which also is the wheel that Henrik Fisker chose on his Blue Planet um, Fisker Ocean that he's personally uh, taken. So anyhow, first thing, 20 inch wheels. Um, what do you guys think? Should there be more 20 inch wheel options? There's only that one Aero Stealth right now. And, um, you know, they, there's four options. So we have a total of four 22 inch options, right? We have the Aero Stealth and we have the Air Glider. One comes in silver, one comes in black. Um, those are your four options for 22 inches, but you only have that one 20 inch option being the Aero Stealth wheel. Do you think Fisker should come up with maybe one more option or maybe no more 20 inch options? One's enough. <sighs> It's a tough, it's a tough yeah. one, isn't it? Like, like Tesla, let's, let's look at Tesla. They have for, for the model three, they have, you know, two different options, right? You have like the standard option, which what, what, what's the standard 18 wheel inch. size? Yeah, 18, 18 inch, inch wheel. And then you have the, the 19 alloy, and 20. Yep. 19 and 20. So those are, those are what they have. And there's not much to choose from. Fisker's actually given us, doing us a solid by giving us you know, four 22 inch options. And there's only happens to be one, you know, 20 inch option and 20 inch is pretty big wheel for a standard wheel. That's actually quite big. Um, so that's, yeah. that's actually quite nice. But for the people who want that 350 mile range on the Fisker uh, Ocean One and the Fisker Ocean Extreme or the 340 mile range on the Ultra, um, they might want to go with, you know, the, you know, they're going to have to go with the 
uh, 20-inch wheels, regardless if they want to keep that that battery range. Um, you know, excluding the Solar Sky route that we just talked about, which which gives you a little bit more mileage per charge. Um, that's uh, where they're at. So I don't know what people are saying in the comments here. Let's see. Does no. anybody um, okay. uh, more 20 inch options? So need more 20s. That's that seems to be the theme. Happy with black 22s. Um, Doug, Can I put that picture up of those wheels that we have not seen anywhere yet. If you... Yeah, and, and those look like 22s as well. Um, Doug says five spoke black 20 inch. I think those are uh, that could be the ones you're talking about, Jim. Uh, these are these got a lot. I, it, I shared my pit, my screen, so I don't know if you can share it or not. Yeah, let me throw it up. Where are those at? Oh, uh, that's yeah, those, from the concept car, right? Yeah, that's one of the initial vehicles, and yeah, those are like the silver with the too. black. Yeah, those look cool though. Yeah. Yeah, those are twenty-two inch wheels though. Is again twenty-two inch wheels. That would be cool in a twenty-inch wheel. Definitely cool in a 20 inch wheel. So let's go to the next thing. The next bit of feedback that people gave had to do with the interior. So the first one, and I don't know much about this, but I know you two will have an opinion on this, ventilated seats. That was the number, uh, you know, one thing with regards to the interior. Hey, ventilated seats, a $70,000 vehicle should have ventilated seats. I heard that comment two dozen times from, you know, two dozen different people. Um, that have a Fisker Ocean One, but we all know what we're going to get. You know, I, I haven't heard anything about ventilated seats. I don't think we're getting ventilated seats. Um, they sound nice, especially if you live in a hot climate, sticky climate. Um, but uh, have you guys been in a car with ventilated seats? Do you like them? Yeah. I, I did a I did a test drive on the a Kia EV6 with the ventilated okay. seats, and I thought they were great. I, I thought okay. it just and during the hot summer, I, I thought they were great. Very nice. Yeah, kinda... it. Go ahead. Go for it, Jim. I was just going to say, it just kind of, sometimes it can make your, uh, instead of your butt being like sweaty from the heat, it kind of feels wet from the cold. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> the cold just makes it, feel, it makes your butt feel wet, <laughs> even though it's not. Wow. Wow. But That's interesting. It's better than being sweaty. So, yeah. Yeah. And you guys have some hot, sticky weather by you, right? <laughs> uh, over in, in yeah. Chicago at times. Yeah. Do you, you you get hot and sticky weather too, don't you, Matthew? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we're right now in eighty four degree weather here, so it's it's a hot one. Uh, um, so it's uh yeah. Today was a pool day. Yesterday was a pool day. Every day this last week, I think I've been to the pool. <laughs> so that's been uh it's been nice, but hot, definitely hot. So ventilated seats. That was the next thing. How to make the Fisker Ocean even better? We had you know more 20, 20 inch wheels. We've had ventilated seats. The third one which has to do with the interior as well, had to do with um, the, the company has, as we know, three different colors, right? We've only seen the colors uh, on the website. We haven't seen anything about the materials. So we have Black Abyss, we have Sea Salt, and we have Malibu. Right now we're looking at the Malibu on the screen and that Malibu has a mixture of fabrics. Right now they call that the Eco Suede. But if you look at the sides of that, um, there is Eco Leather. Um, is, uh, is is our understanding. So you have a little bit of that side trim, which has eco leather, but primarily the seat is eco suede. Now the feedback that we've seen across the board is to make the Fisker Ocean better, each of the Keller options that the company provides um, should come with all the different material options. That would mean the Black Abyss would have uh, customers want Black Abyss to be, um, you know, eco suede. They want Black Abyss to be eco leather, and they also want it to be what Fisker is calling eco fabric. The same would go with Malibu. We see it right here with eco suede. People want to see this this blue color in eco leather, just a pure eco leather, as well as an eco fabric. And the same would go for sea salt. They want to see eco leather, eco suede, and eco fabric. So. That was the second, you know, bit of feedback in regards to interior, how to make the Fisker Ocean even better um, for any people at Fisker that are tuning in, that are product managers, there is some feedback for you. It's also on the site and that's not my feedback, that's feedback from the Fisker community. The next thing on the list is this bad boy. Um, this is the best image that I could possibly find for a heads-up display or the lack there of a heads-up display. Um, 
what are your guys' thoughts? People want a heads up display. I've had a heads up display. I think it's actually kind of neat, but I think it, it, it feels a, li a little to me like you have a lot of stuff going on right, you know, in front of the driver with, you know, the, that, you know, the, the digital um, speedometer engages and then right in front of that, you would have, you know, the uh, heads up display that would project onto the, the windshield in front of you. What do you guys think? Should there be a heads up display? Would that make the Fisker Ocean even better? I've never had one, but um, I think it would be it would be pretty cool to have it. Um, and the way that they make them now, half the time you can't even tell that they're even in the dash. They're True. you know they're just molded down inside. You can't even hardly see it. And uh, True. they're they're pretty good. I mean, some of them even project like um, I don't know how they explain it, but they can project your directions for your navigation, and it's kind of in front direction. of you, so the the arrow will be like uh, smaller farther away That's from right. you and as you get closer to the turn then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it like points down the road that you're supposed to turn on it's pretty cool that's right so so let me explain it real quick and then matthew you tell us all, all about the, the heads up display and what you think that the, just the overall general i you know overview of a heads up display it basically keeps you more uh it keeps your eyes focused on the road uh, it, 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 you know, removes distractions from you. So you're not having to look down at the speedometer, look over at your screen. If you're in a Tesla, for example, you, you look over to the right in order to see the speedometer. Um, it keeps your eyes in front of you. When I had a BMW 3 Series, a 328i, it had a heads-up display and it included the speedometer. It included what radio station I was listening to. It included turn-by-turn -turn directions using the onboard navigation, uh, assuming I typed in the, the you know, address of where I was going or the destination. Nation. Um, and then it also threw up different um, alerts, different, um, uh, I don't know what they're called, alerts would probably be the best way I can think of right now off the top of my head, but like, hey, you have a flat tire, as an example, or your windshield washer fluid is low, or hey, you're coming up on, you know, uh, frozen pavement or frozen ground, slow down. Um, it comes up with those alerts so that you're always seeing it on your screen and the neat thing about the, the BMW, you could actually adjust um, where the projection occurred oh. on the windshield. So if you were short, you can move it down. If you were tall, you can move it up. Um, and it, it worked for every driver. So that's my best explanation of it. It helps you stay more focused and less distracted while you're driving by keeping your eyes directly um, centered. Yeah, I want to add, I have a, a 2020 Volvo XC60, and we have the HUD on that car, and being pretty recent, it's pretty high resolution, and also has all the things you mentioned that your BMW had. Uh, it was also nice when it has the speed limit signs and all that on mm. it, too. It's nice to have, you know, to remind you. Uh, but I think the most important thing is that it is the way you your eyes look at it it's focused so it's at the end of the hood so it, it the image looks like it's like six feet away from you so oh. you're kind of always your That's eyes cool. are focused outward you don't have to change your your focus like when you're looking at an instrument close and you know yeah. uh, instrument panel or something like that so your eyes are always in the distance and yeah it's, it's very handy i mean you get used to it very quickly as a um um for your speedometer um, turns, you know, it, it becomes second nature when you have that. And the people who think that it's too much, you can always turn it off, which is not nice. true. So. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was definitely settings on what you could have, what you, you know, turn on this feature, turn off that feature, etc. That was that was actually quite nice. Um, I think that would be really nice. Um, the speed limit signs. I love that feature on the Tesla Model 3. Um, I don't know if that's a, a I'm guessing it's not a standard feature, but um, we have the full self-driving. So it ends up saying what the signals are and what the speed, speed limit is. And that's actually really nice to, to be able to know. Um, even though it doesn't get it right all the time, it gets it right most of the time. It's pretty nice. Um, so uh, before we go on to the next thing, so there's one other thing that, you know, is, is uh, people want to see to make the Fisker Ocean even better. Um, just out of curiosity, what do you guys think? What's your impression of the steering wheel? Do you think it's, uh, you, what do you what do you think? What are your first impressions of a steering wheel? Say that's the, a, a close to production steering wheel right there. We know it's not, but it's, it's, it's probably not gonna change much. I think it says Fisker Ocean 1 down below for the people who are getting the Fisker Ocean 1. Um, I've seen those same symbols on, on some of the, pro, the, the later prototypes. What do you think of this? Um, do, you, do you like the, the look of the steering wheel? Does the steering wheel not really matter to you? 
Eh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's perfectly usable. I mean, uh, I think it looks nicer than my Tesla Model 3 steering wheel, uh, which I think is pretty boring. At least it has yeah. like some little like, you know, the texture on that, um, the middle section where the logo is. Yeah. It looks yeah. interesting. Um, having the uh, buttons and the uh, scroll wheels uh, can control a lot of things. Like, for example, a lot of people probably want to know how you change the volume. So I'm betting one of those scroll wheels will be volume uh, and one will be probably doing some other. They're probably multifunctional um, yeah. in addition to the buttons that are also there, too. The, the four yeah. buttons on each side. So I, I think it's fine. I mean, it's perfectly usable to me. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, some people have been talking about that on, on various sites, and I just wanted to get your guys' quick take on, on that. And yeah, the button sharing. Those uh, scroll wheels are going to be something I'm going to have to get used to because my boys had Fords and things like that, just have buttons for everything. So getting used to that and it's going to be a little challenging, I think. Yeah, a couple people more, said more to here, my I wife see. than me, probably. <laughs> so let's see here a couple people said uh, steering wheel simple love the yoke on the tesla s the model s um i wish the steering wheel looked more sleek but i'm not worried uh i'm not too worried about it as long as it drives the vehicle um that's funny uh let's see here the hud um hello tomaso thanks for for tuning in tonight um same with you kevin hello they're members of the Fisker Club, Fisker Roddy Club, I should say, not Fisker Club, the Fisker Roddy Club. So welcome. Thank you for, for your support. Um, Doug, same to you. And uh, any other members there? Uh, Doug Thiel. Doug, I think there's two Dugs on here. Welcome both of you. Mike, same to you. And uh, wow, somebody did a, a, the taco. I, I hadn't seen that. And Rosanna with the taco when we talked about the taco tray. All right, I'm, I'm digressing. I can get back to those in just a second. Um, go ahead, for the people who haven't already subscribed to our channels, go ahead and subscribe. There's three of us here. We have three channels, um, starting with uh, Jim in OSR Garage. You can find him over there. Uh, you have Matthew over at Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger. And then ours as well is, is Fiskarati. Those are our three channels where you might be watching this now, or you could also be watching it potentially on Fiskarati.com uh, as we put the, the stream up there as well. So subscribe to our channels if you haven't already done so, and make sure to like the video as that makes the video, um, it ends up making the video show up for other people who also might like Fisker and the Fisker Ocean. All right, let's get to that last thing. There was four ways to make the Fisker Ocean even better. The last one is this. Can you guys guess what it is? How could you make the Fisker Ocean better? We're looking at a test vehicle in solar orange. Okay, let's let's do this. Let's make it a little more obvious. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> there, there we go. There's some there's some some colors here. Well, let's see. What are these colors? We have uh, launch colors, and we have colors available in 2023. So the other feedback to make the Fisker Ocean even better. Um, customers, people who've pre-ordered the Fisker Ocean, people who've reserved the Fisker Ocean, they want to see the 2023 colors at launch. They want to see the solar orange Fisker Ocean in their driveway. Uh, they want to see that Fisker Ocean 1 be in the seagrass or in Red Planet. They want some edgy colors. Um, they want colors that are going to make people's eyes turn and be like, what car was that? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up writing this article uh, over the weekend and somebody posted earlier today on the forum about the same thing. They want to see these launch colors. This feedback is by far and away um, the number one, uh, you know, request that we've seen in our comments is, I want that solar orange as a launch color. I want that on my extreme right away. Um, what do you guys think? What do you think about the colors? Should we, you know, I, I don't think we're going to get anything other than the launch colors, right? We have seven. I don't think we're getting any more, but what do you think? I don't know. I, 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 I would definitely think having more colors is better. And, uh, of, of the, uh, second set, I like the solar orange. I'm still trying to figure out how Marine layer is different than silver lining. They look so close. I think maybe yeah. instead of a bluish tinge, it's more of a greenish tinge or something. I'm yeah. not sure what the difference between those two are. And uh, um, seagrass looks cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand the black pearl. 
It doesn't look black at all. It looks like a dark blue. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely it, it's a very it says metallic gloss, right? Which you have with the night drive, it's just gloss. Um, so it, yeah, it's hard to see from the swatches, but it definitely's got little it's a sparkly, in it. sparkly, yeah, black. sparkly. That's right, sparkly <laughs> black. That's a great way to describe it, Matthew. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think you know, let us know in the comments. So we got a lot of solar orange. Yes, seagrass. You know, too many blues. Orange is my favorite. Solar orange, otherwise, uh, great white. Um, we've chosen great white. We like great white. Someone says, I wish they had Lambo yellow. That's kind of funny. <laughs> is it just me or is that sun soaked look pink? It's rose gold. It's apple rose gold is the color. Oh, wow. yeah. my wife might want that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pink. Yeah, I guess. Right. Rose gold. is. Pink. <laughs> yeah. That might look really pretty on an entire car. I'm no, I don't think I'm sure there's got to be a car out there that's that color. I, I've never yeah, seen it. I hope they kind of like show some some of these uh, cars in these colors so that we can kind of have a better idea of what it's going to look like. That's right. Yeah, we've only seen maybe at most five or six of these colors, but most of them have been, uh, we, we've seen, as, as you know, we've seen the you know Blue Planet, we've seen Solar Orange in that test vehicle that we just looked at. Uh, with Henry Fisker there. We've seen the Big Sur Blue, we've seen uh, Silver Lining, and we've seen, I believe, Stealth Green uh, over at Magna. Um, oh, at the factory, yeah. At the factory, yeah. yeah. I think it was on that, um, if I remember right, the thing that they put the battery on, uh, I forgot what the high voltage right. battery thing that screws on the bolts, I don't know, um, something, <laughs> something like that. But I think those are the only ones that we've seen so there's quite a few there's, that we haven't seen yet there there's you saw the great white in a at the factory oh that's right you're right the great white yeah and, i thought maybe that was primer but yeah great white that was a very and on, I was on instagram i saw it, somebody had posted and it said the color was horizon gray that's and right. i that said was the other one yeah i said okay. that was awful blue for being a gray color and they, I, they I confirmed think Fisker it. actually confirmed it that yeah. it was Horizon Gray in a video that they did. Um, so yeah, so there's a couple other ones I missed there. Great White and Horizon Gray. If that Great White was really Great White, it was definitely a white car. Um, so who knows what color that was. Um, I, I hope it's Great White. That actually looked really nice. It looked too flat though, the paint, but uh, for a gloss. Um, maybe that car was gonna get wrapped in camo. Who knows, so they didn't paint it. <laughs> maybe that was primer, I don't know. Um, so anyhow, that that is your list that people have provided for feedback to make the Fisker Ocean even better. Um, quick recap, we ended up having uh, the 20 inch wheels, more 20 inch wheels. We had ventilated seats. We had more seat options, uh, you know, materials and seat options, all the different combinations, more of those. We had the heads up display or the HUD, and then we had um, more launch colors uh, than the seven that we have now. So that was, um, that's basically what people think. How can you make this Ocean better? And the funny thing is we haven't even seen, you know, not, none of us, I'm gonna say none of us, cause it's, it's probably true, at least for everybody watching here, unless Henrik Fisker's on here um, watching, he might be one of the 96 people. None of us have test driven the vehicle, right? None of us have gotten behind the vehicle as far as I know. Uh, but maybe we have 96 people and I don't see 96 people chatting. So maybe we have a few people from Fisker um, on the on the line here or watching us. And uh, if they are welcome, thank you for, for uh, joining us. Please subscribe to our channels. Um, we, we appreciate it. Um, so let's go to the next thing. This one's gonna gonna uh, rile up a few a few people here. Let's talk about the Fisker EV truck. So <laughs> this this has not been talked about for a long time, like uh, 22 months, a long time, or maybe even 18 months, a long time. So we ended up writing something about this uh, yesterday because we started thinking about what could that fourth electric vehicle be that Fisker is going to end up releasing, right? They've, they've already released uh, the Fisker Ocean. We know about the Fisker Ocean. It's going to start production on November 17th. That's the firm date. And how many days is November 17th? Um, away here let's see november 17th how many days days to november 17th 71 so fisker ocean we got that's our first ev we then have the fisker pair which will start production mid 2024 and then we have the fisker ronin now the funny thing 
Um, and I don't have a link to it. Maybe I can find the link to it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up an image here real quick. I'm going to pull up an image of the latest Fisker EV pickup truck that Henrik Fisker shared himself at the beginning of 2021 on LinkedIn. And here you go. This is the beautiful truck that he teased us with. And that was quite a long time ago. I'd say that's uh, a good 21 months ago, 22 months ago, mm -hmm. somewhere thereabouts. There is your Fisker EV truck. And he said, it's actually going to be more radical than this. Um, let me actually pull up the, the quote. Maybe some people have actually read that article. Um, that was a quite an interesting article. It had, uh, I want to say over the last... 48 hours, maybe 10,000 people read it. It's actually been quite a popular article. Um, so he ended up saying this. He said, with this, this image that he posted, he said, okay, yes, the next vehicle might be a lifestyle pickup truck, but not just any truck. We want to create the lightest, most efficient EV pickup in the world, making it the most sustainable. Image is just a teaser, not the final. Final will be way more radical quote unquote that's what fisker said mr henrik fisker when he posted that image you see on the screen there to linkedin back at the very beginning of 2021 so i i thought okay the the funny thing he, he said the next vehicle might be if i if i uh, remember those those words correctly here um the next vehicle might be a lifestyle pickup truck well we know um the next vehicles that the, the company released were not a pickup truck they were the fisker pair and the fisker ronin so we're still waiting for that fourth vehicle. What do you guys think the next vehicle is going to be? Is it going to be a truck? Is it going to be a van? I know, I know uh, a couple people on this chat right now or watching us want there to be, they want a Fisker van. They want the minivan, reinvent the minivan, bring the minivan back. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think that their probably best bet is to go with the truck before a van. But if, depending on the timing of it, if they think they can produce a van about the same time or before Volkswagen can get the buzz over here, because that's not going to start till like the 2024, I think, is when it's supposed to arrive. Um, if they think they can do that before then or time that out right, it might be a the, the better choice. Um, but if they don't think they can do that, then really, um, I think the truck is the way to go because that's what everybody's looking at right now. Um, and if they can get something that's extremely efficient and lightweight and can get the range because of how efficient it is, they will have a step up above um, these other trucks that are making these big full-size trucks and just piling big batteries into them, which causes you to have to charge longer. Um, and so... I think it, that would be, for me, I think it would be the truck, and I hope they do because I will put a reservation on that as soon as it opens up. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I would I would do the same here. What do you, what do you think, Matt? What, what should the hey, next... Do you know what that reminds me size-wise? Yeah. Is the yeah, new yeah. Hyundai Santa Cruz uh, pickup mm -hmm. truck. Yeah. Have you that seen one. that? Hyundai Santa Cruz? Yeah, Hyundai Santa Cruz uh, mm -hmm. just came See, out recently. Let's, let's, throw a, and, let's throw an image. Let's look at a picture uh, of it. Yeah, let me throw an image of it. That's the Kari truck. <laughs> yeah, it's a Kari truck. It looks beautiful. It let me throw an image of it. It kind of looks very similar. Yeah, it does actually. Let's see. You know, like let's a, throw a, this a unibody on the screen. type. Of... Okay, let me share yeah, the screen probably... over here. That and the Ford Maverick size, but yep. the Maverick, it looks more like a truck and the Santa Cruz looks more like a car. Ooh, that don't look good. There we go. Um, so yeah, there's the Santa Cruz. That is very interesting. Yeah, it looks very similar in design. Um, I I don't love the look of that. Um, I, but I, I think there's a do. I think there's a need for some smaller size pickup trucks. Yeah. So. Um, there are there is yes definitely and when i think of a truck i i want like a big bed on the truck to be able to fit the christmas tree in yeah. um in, in this case uh i'm still gonna it's still gonna be hanging off to the side and um it's it's probably not much different than it hanging out the back of the tesla model 3 or the bmw right. or the jetta that we've had they never fit in the car um they're <laughs> always even with the seats down they're always kind of hanging out the back and that's what that that's one of the main reasons why I would want a truck would be to fit bigger things in it that I can't get in the car. 
Um, so I personally would like a larger truck bed. Um, the, the lumber from Home Depot, like that's always been an issue trying to get in the back of, of a Tesla Model 3 or a BMW or a Jetta. Um, it just doesn't work out very well. Um, I love doing DIY projects around the house and uh, it's uh, sometimes, yeah, I, I just prefer a, a truck and we don't have the room, unfortunately, here to have both a truck and, and a car um, in the garage, it just won't fit. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to have one and, and have it parked outside and, and use it when we need to. But I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to spend 40 grand or 50 grand for a truck. Um, if it has a short bed, probably wouldn't do it. Um, I do like the, the Ford Lightning. You know, I think that's a nice looking truck and it has the same well, rear end. It only has same a bed. It only has a five and a half bed. How, how does that compare to the, the normal size? Is it? A couple uh, mine, feet shorter, six or eight, same. right? The you know the it's the same as the four door regular F one hundred and fifty is five and a half. Um, now, like I have a super cab, and mine has a six and a half foot bed on it. And then, of course, if you want to get there's ones out there you can get an eight foot bed, but not in the configuration. Um, but I'm, I'm just saying, if you're looking at bed size, that that thing would probably have maybe a four and a half to five foot bed. And then you look at a F-150 only has a five and a half foot bed. So, I mean, yeah. really, it's not that big of a difference. How and many feet do you think that is right there with the Santa Cruz? Is that three that feet? That is like four. That's four feet. Wow, that looks like a short four it's feet. It's probably the angle of it. Yeah. And then this right um, here, same? You think four feet there too? It's, it's about the same as the Ford Ranger. I think it's actually a little, or not the, uh, the maverick um and the maverick i think is is just over i think it's like four and a half and the santa cruz is like just over four yeah got it now one thing i noticed about these these wheels they looked similar to me so this this photo was was shared by henrik fisker like back in the beginning yeah like the the air gliders right they looked so similar to that same pattern um, so I thought that was actually kind of interesting. And I wonder if those are 22 inch wheels as well, or if those are maybe even bigger. Um, they look definitely big. Um, but yeah, I, I love, I love the look of, of those wheels more than I love the look of the actual truck itself. Um, I like but the yeah. look of the truck. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, you're a truck guy. Awesome. I, I've, I've only owned one truck in my whole life and it was a Toyota Tacoma and it was red. The only red yeah. car that I've ever owned. And I love Toyota Tacoma. I would I would buy a, a Toyota Tacoma EV in a heartbeat. And I think recently they announced they were gonna actually put one into production in EV. Um, but I've I've been told and I've and I've read and um, I've I've seen, you know, hey, you know, good luck uh, on Toyota coming out with a, a, a Tacoma EV anytime soon. Um, but yeah, I think that would be one that I would I would love to have a Toyota Tacoma EV. That would be quite neat. Um, but I'd, I'd consider a Fisker uh, electric vehicle pickup truck if, if it looked maybe a little different than this. <laughs> that's that's my thing. I, I, I prefer the longer bed. Um, that'd be I, the biggest one. I just look at it as, you know, I have a full-size truck and yeah. I don't tow anything with it. So I don't use really? it to tow with. We more had it because we were doing so much work on the house and stuff like that. Yeah. We were able to go get lumber and stuff. But other than that, I drove a, a 2002 Ford Ranger before that. So I had okay. a small little bed, small little truck, and I loved it. I thought it was great. And yeah. if it wasn't, if I could have gotten a Maverick with the hybrid engine and getting 40 miles to the gallon, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But you can't get those either right now. So... Um, I think a smaller truck will be great because then if you need to use the back, you have it, um, even though you may not use it most of the time. But, you know, more or less having a truck is kind of the Midwest thing. Everybody, yeah. every family's got to have a truck and we don't drive it anywhere other than been back and forth to work because I get 20 miles a gallon on gas and that's probably about the best you're going to get, 20 to 22. Yeah. And so you don't drive it every day, everywhere. It's not your family vehicle. You have something else as your family vehicle. It gets better gas mileage for trips. So it's just kind of a, a thing to have here in the Midwest. Yeah, I, I thought having having looked back at this tweet, I was thinking about, or this this post to, on LinkedIn, and there was actually a tweet too that was first published with the Fisker Alaska, uh, and that was February of 2020. 
Um, this one came out at the at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, and I thought, hey, if you know, he, he, Fisker said, hey, this might be the next vehicle. I thought, geez, I wonder, you know, why, why you know, they came out with the Fisker Payer, which probably is more of a mass market vehicle in their their opinion, trying to disrupt, you know, how people. Um, you know, move in, in urban cities. And then um, the Ronin kind of threw me for a loop with the, you know, a supercar uh, convertible sedan at 200 grand. That's going to be very niche, but it makes sense. They have the, you know, the Fisker Magic Works um, in the UK, and that's going to be kind of the high, uh, you know, the high end, um, very niche, niche cars, niche cars. So is it going to be a truck? I don't know. What, what, do, what would you like to see, Matt, as the fourth vehicle? Is it a truck? Is it a van? Is it like a, a Toyota Sienna? Uh, if I got that right, or like a, a Chevy Astro van, or you know, um, there, vans just aren't that popular anymore. I think there's okay. only four minivans made now: the uh, uh, Odyssey, the Sienna, um, the Caravan, and I think there's one more. I think Kia has one, but hmm. this everybody else has stopped making them, so I don't think they're anywhere near as much as uh, if they did a pickup truck. Got I think it. a pickup truck makes more sense. Very good. Yeah, I thought though, they rounded though, out the I, portfolio of the lineup. Though I think a van would be amazing if you have kids and stuff. There's uh, the uh, caravan um, has a plug-in hybrid and it's supposedly like really good. Yeah. Uh, from my part. Um, so maybe they sh maybe somebody should do that. But I don't know for Fisker being such a small manufacturer or small company that's going to be using contract manufacturing. You know, maybe they should stick with the biggest uh, markets first, you know. Makes sense. And they're going to be taking, uh, you know, they're going to be having the Fisker Pair built over in Ohio at mm -hmm. what is now the Foxconn uh, factory, which the uh, Lordstown, uh, I believe it's called the Endurance, is going to actually be built there. Um, so that's going to be a pickup truck. And uh, that's... Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen what that looks like, but um, you know maybe maybe there's something there with uh, Lordstown and and uh, you know using that particular factory that that Foxconn has to maybe build a truck at some point. Um, that'd be interesting if if they go the truck route. Um, Foxconn will certainly have the experience uh, if they end up getting the Lordstown uh, pickup truck to market. So let's pull the another picture. minivan, Sean. Oh, let's see. There we go. That's a. Oh, that's pretty futuristic looking. <laughs> the Zeker Zero Zero Nine. That is supposed Very to have nice. the new cattle, um, Killen or Quillen. I don't know how they pronounce it, but that's what that new battery is supposed yeah, to have. That new like battery. Hundred mile range. That's cool. So let's throw this one up. This is an image of the Lordstown truck where the Fisker pair also will be built. Um, let's take a look at this one here. Throw that down and we'll throw this one up and take a look. There we go. So that's the, the, the Lordstown Endurance truck and that's an EV that's gonna be built at the Foxconn factory in Lordstown, Ohio. So that would actually make you speculating here that, you know, wonder if Lordstown itself would be a potential acquisition target for, for Fisker. That could be interesting in order to get into the truck uh, business, if you will, um, as I'm sure Lordstown has a load of IP. I'm sure that uh, if we have any, um, uh, you know, I doubt there's any Lordstown uh, investors listening, but, um, I think that would be a, a good good fit as far as hey you know they're going to be taking up a lot of the capacity for the the Foxconn uh, factory with this truck that's going to be manufactured. Maybe there's some sort of a something there with uh, Fisker and, and and you know Lordstown and, and Foxconn. Um, I think that truck looks beautiful. I think that looks uh, really nice. I actually like the look of that. You, you're not a fan, huh? I like the look of that truck. It looks nice like a truck. combination. To me, it looks like a combination of a F-150? Um, an older F-150 <laughs> with a Silverado. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't like the wheel wells. I hate square wheel wells. It drives me insane. Yeah. Like, why would Tommaso... you try to put a round circle in a square hole? It just looks <laughs> yeah. stupid. 
Yeah, Tommaso <laughs> calls out a good point. He says the Lordstown truck had a, a it basically had in wheel motor hubs, and uh, he said I would avoid those. Seems we'll have ton of issues. Yeah, there was a, another company, yeah. and I, I'm slipping my mind. There was another yeah, Aptera company. does the same thing. Yeah, Aptera. Um, there was a company um, that went public through a SPAC that ended up building kind of like a skateboard platform, and I haven't looked up that company in forever. But they basically had um, motors in each of the wheels, and uh, they were just basically selling their platform oh. to other EVs. I can't think of the name of it, um, but yeah, kind of the same concept that that Lordstown has. That um, other anyhow. solar car has it too. Yeah. Okay. I can't think We're... of the name of it. Life, lifestyle, not lifestyle. I don't remember what it's called, but it's a solar EV. Also has wheel hub motors. Got it. Got it. Yeah, the company I was thinking of was was based in Israel. Um, mm. I can't think of the name of it, but yeah, that that's their whole their whole business is selling the skateboard and the motors attached to the skateboard, and they happen to be in in the wheels or the hubs of the wheels. Um, but I don't think anything's been actually uh, put into production yet. It was kind of like uh, one of the specs that, hey, we'll have stuff in 2024, or 2025. It wasn't Atlas, was it? It wasn't Atlas. Um, I don't think so. No, it wasn't that one. Uh, God, it's going to kill me. I'm who else it could be. Um, Atlas, I don't think that right. they're ever going to make a truck. I don't think it's actually going to come to production at all. It looks like a tank, but I don't think it's going to make it to production. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it here. Um, Re. Re is the stock symbol. Um, let me pull it up and see here. R-E-E, -E, I think is what it is. Let's see what it, what the name of the company is. Maybe that's what the name of the company uh, is. Re Automotive. Yeah, Christopher was right. I was thinking of the Lightyear one is what the one that I was thinking of that it has in wheel hub motors yeah let me see this yeah re automotive have you guys heard of that one or no no no, no. let me throw up well, maybe that's not it this don't look similar let's see technology maybe i'm wrong here maybe it's not re i think it is uh yeah let's let me throw this up i think this is the company this is kind of interesting we will throw this up on the screen just for just for fun and then we'll go to Q and A. Here, let's go here and throw that up. So he's actually, it looks like he's uh, this, this individual on the screen here, he's fastening something, which I believe is a motor uh, attached to the to the hub of, of the wheel. Um, there's a video. Yeah, yeah so there's a, uh, there you go right there. So they make the skateboard re and the motors are in the hubs, hmm. similar to that uh, Lordstown Endurance. So I believe they said this a long time ago, you're probably saying it right now, but they, the whole idea was to make, uh, to save space um, was the idea. Uh, they, they, by putting the, the motor in the wheels, it gives more room on the skateboard in order to actually build whatever you want as far as the configuration of the vehicle itself. Um, so, the parts that actually move it don't get in the way. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that's actually interesting. Yeah, I've got an ah. interesting, I got yeah, an interesting go one it. here. Have you guys heard of uh, Alpha Motor? They have I an have interesting pickup I remember seeing a while ago. Mm. If you pull up their website, Alpha Motor yeah. Inc. Okay, let's check it out. Ooh, that it looks interesting. It still reminds me of an I remember seeing this Toyota actually. pickup. Yeah, I saw this actually at the uh, go down EV to awards. vehicles wolf. Okay, if you it's, click it's on the vehicles tab, no, oh vehicles. Let's see, and go down the to wolf. wolf. Oop, maybe not that wolf. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. And if yeah, you that scroll company, down, you'll that... see some Oh, pictures. I've seen that. It's pretty cool looking. It's just a two door, but it just. Has some like Toyota '80s pickup vibe to me, or something. It does it looks like the yeah. Back to the Future truck? Yeah, right? yeah. I heard something about these guys, and they were. It was somebody that was kind of dissecting their presentation and all this, and they basically were saying that they didn't think the company was actually real. It was uh, like yeah, they, I, that truck. Yeah, so I don't know. It's a know. good I don't... pad design, but yeah, yeah, I'd, it'll never get produced from what I've read. 
Interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's that's neat. Wonder if they'll be at a fully charged live. Probably not. <laughs> I, I that'd be interesting it. to check out. Um, you're so, the, okay, so uh, I was looking we'll at the map it. on the fully charged live. So the app yeah. Terra is pretty close to the Fisker Ocean. So yeah, it looks sure like you when you walk through the, the main doors, uh, Fisker's booth was going to be straight and a little over to the right, but close to the yeah. entrance, it looked like, or not far from the entrance. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, they were also next to some YouTube star that talks about electric vehicles. So I thought that was interesting. There's actually a lot of, as people may or may not know, and I didn't know until um, the Fisker Ocean was covered by Fully Charged, but they have one of the largest automotive channels on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, they've, they've invited, it looks like, a lot of um, YouTube uh, personalities to actually mm -hmm. have booths or stands uh, at yeah. the event. So I don't know what those people are going to do other than maybe they're going to broadcast live from the event and talk about the vehicles and oh. maybe have guests come over. So I would imagine them being next to uh, this YouTube person next to the Fisker Ocean. I'm sure this guy's going to talk about the Fisker Ocean, or at least I would hope he does. Was well, um, it uh, Ben he, Solons? That's right. That's is the it name. Ben yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really big. He's uh, had Teslas and he's got a Rivian now. Um, but he does like talks and like conferences and stuff. I think in what he's he's actually talking. I think he's in, in your area too. Talk. Huh? I think he's in San Diego. Okay. Okay. His 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 videos are really well produced. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this guy does this full time though. Um, it, amazing. I was I was yeah. shocked. I was like, wow, this this is some high yeah. quality uh production here that this guy has yeah. compared to this he has you know, a Fiskarati live you know it's it's, it's kind of low budget he has, hey we all have fun right he has a big automotive background where he's worked with a okay. lot of um automotive um like manufacturers and done a lot of stuff with magazines and and tv stuff and okay. things like that he kind of comes yeah. from that background before he got into youtube so he already had that kind of a uh a well-known personality so it was easy for him he was already like i think he was already tied into like somewhat with the media where he was already getting cars from manufacturers and stuff when he started his channel so he was already nice. established before he did a youtube channel yeah well regardless he's got high production quality videos i, I was he's very I was good blown yeah. away yeah they're really he nice very good so now's the time where we take your questions live and do our best job to answer them. If we don't know the answer, we'll punt it. Uh, and maybe a good place to put it is in the forum, Fiskarati forum, your favorite forum, whatever it may be. And maybe someone there is smarter than, uh, than us, definitely smarter than myself. Uh, and they, they will help answer it. So if you have questions, I'm gonna start going from the top and, and look to see what we have answered uh, and, and kind of go from there. Uh, but yeah, if you guys see questions, fire away. Uh, just throw them out, and we'll see if we can we can help answer them. Well, people are talking about the Aptera. Just little throw out there that I've got a video on the Aptera up. If anybody hasn't so, seen it yet, <laughs> yeah, it's a, a nice car here in San Diego too. Um, so C Doc had a question when, and we we kind of answered this, but this is at the very beginning. He said, uh, "Wonder when option to change configuration will happen." So we know that in October of this year, Fisker will allow us to use the next generation configurator on their website and mobile app to reconfigure or to see um, more higher definition uh, images. Henrik Fisker has called it in the past a 3D configurator. Um, that was a quote unquote. So um, I don't know what 3D is going to be other than it's going to have very high dimensional photos, be able to kind of swivel it, see a 360 degree view. We're not going to have to put on 3D glasses, you know, with the red eye and the blue eye, but um, it's going to be high, high definition. So um, November is what we're, we're looking at. Or excuse me, October uh, is what we're looking at there. And Matthew brought us some new information when we were on here about Henrik talking about, um, you know, you know, we were talking about the calculation of the, uh, the, the solar sky roof and, you know, what, you know, when are we going to know what that calculation, how did you calculate it? Fisker said, Henrik Fisker said, it's a complex calculation. They're going to provide the complex calculation on the new website, which will be the end of October. So 
to answer your question, CDOC, I would say end of October would probably be a safe guess when you'll be able to use the next generation configurator. Um, going down here, let's see. So this person, it's not really a question, but it is, has a question at the end. I'm going to read it because I, I, I disagree. He says, I'm sure the Ocean One will be a great car. I agree. It's going to be a great car. So he says, I'm sure the Ocean One will be a great car, but not knowing all the specs, I currently don't see $70,000 worth of car compared to the other models. Is it just me? Eh. I, I think the car, and this is a, an opinion of one, I think it definitely is worth more than 70 grand based on what things cost today. Um, it's, it's by far worth more than, you know, $68,999. I, you know, I, this, this bottle of Gatorade here, this delicious bottle of Gatorade used to cost me 99 cents. Now it costs me $1.75. <laughs> um, things just cost more. And, you know, to build a car and, 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 um, offer all the features that it has when we do know a lot of the specs, believe it or not, a lot of the yeah. specs have actually been released. We just don't know some of the intricacies of those specs. Um, like how fast will it take to, to charge the car? How big the battery is all that, all that stuff. Um, but we do know that the Fisker ocean one is going to come with a lot of features. We've written loads about them. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, if anybody wants more information, um, we can go to our site and search, uh, press, I think press kit might be one of the terms you can use or, or type in, um, uh, comparison. Uh, we've done a couple of articles that show the features side by side, all that stuff. Um, when Fisker didn't used to list them side by side, we created a chart to make it easier to, to try to figure out what was available. Um, they since done that. So you can do that. I, I think it's worth more than 70 grand, but that's an opinion of one. Do you either of you have an opinion on that or should we go to the next question? Um, I just think if people are, don't probably don't realize how much that solar roof probably costs, it's probably a lot more than what you think. So it's probably, yeah. I'm thinking it's probably at least a five to $8,000 option in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then even the revolve screen, just the functionality of having that to be able to turn and revolve and everything. That's probably, you know, another 500 to a thousand dollars there probably um and then you look at the uh Fi pilot and having everything included into that you're probably looking at another 1500 to two thousand dollars i would say somewhere in that range um and then there's you know there's multiple multiple little small other little things that it's gonna have that it has that the ultra isn't gonna have so i think the value is there if you want it um, yeah, you, know, you got the cold weather package. You have the 22 yeah. inch wheels. Uh, you have the yeah. premium, you know, eco eco fabric, eco leather seats um, that'll come standard. Uh, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff in there. Um, yeah, I, and, and things today cost more than they did, you know, when the car was initially yeah. announced. So I expect when I upgrade some of the features from the Ultra. I'm expecting I'm probably going to spend about five or six thousand dollars to upgrade to some of the things that I do want that the extreme has um, and then after that then it's you adding in the little roof and all that stuff so I, I think the value is there yeah Yeah, clearly 5,000 people thought that there was value, right? That's why they ended up pre-ordering the vehicle and putting down $5,000 as a down payment uh, or a deposit. Um, and uh, I, I would say, yeah, that, you know, more people than probably myself thought there was a lot of value there. Um, so going down to the next question here, let's see, I'm scrolling down. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. Um, not a question that I'm going to read. Um, Somebody said, if the ocean was a Tesla, you'd pay 110000 <laughs> So somebody says this. So they had a question. Sean, have you been affected by the electric grid issues in California? And how have you been dealing with it? It's been on the national news. So that's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm in San Diego and we have... San Diego Gas and Electric, and I think uh, uh, Matthew and I had did a show of, I don't know, a month ago or so about charging your electrical vehicle. 
And we ended up getting uh, here for the past, as I mentioned, it's like, it's literally probably 80. I don't know what it is. You can Google what the weather is in San Diego right now. I'm going to guess probably still 83, 84. We don't have air conditioning here. Um, we get an email every single day from San Diego Gas and Electric that gives us an incentive to not use power between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. And right now I'm probably sucking the juice out of the grid right now with my, com with my computer and the screen on bright, right? So maybe I should, maybe I should lower my screen here and, and you won't see me as well on, on the picture, but the screen uh, being so bright, it's allowing me to, uh, to hopefully be shown here. <laughs> but if I lower it, maybe I'll help the, the grid out. No, in all seriousness, um, we get an email every morning that says between 4, uh, 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., conserve electricity, uh, don't, you know, run your appliances, don't specifically mentions, don't charge your electric vehicle. Um, we, we also got an, an email notice from the state of California. I don't know how I got onto their email distribution list, but it basically said, Hey, don't charge your electrical vehicle. Um, during the day, do it at night, 12 AM to 6 AM, etc." which is also coincides with San Diego Gas and Electric. Maybe San Diego Gas and Electric shared our, our email address with the state of California, but we got a, a, a message from them as well saying conserve power. Um, aside from that, I, I haven't literally watched the, the local news in probably a month. Uh, I haven't even watched the national news in probably a month as well. So I don't know what, what they're saying specifically, but I do see the emails come through. Um, we're on a time of use plan here. Most of our energy uh, consumption is during super off peak hours because that's the cheapest here for us. It becomes, uh, instead of us paying 64 cents for on peak, or uh, I think it's 42 cents for, for, uh, off, for off peak, um, we go for the super off peak, which is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So we're doing our laundry on the weekends. Um, last night I put a load of laundry in the, the washing machine and this has nothing to do with Fisker, but hopefully I have to answer that person's question, how we're dealing with it. Um, I, I, I put loads of laundry in at 9 PM at night, uh, or on the weekends. Uh, but last night I put a load of laundry in at 9 PM. I waited till midnight and I ended up putting it in the, in the dryer and dried the, the clothes in the in the dryer, our electric dryer um, at 12 a.m. just when we would charge our car. One, to help out the grid uh, and, and conserve power, but also to get that 10 cents per kilowatt hour rate as opposed to, you know, 42 cents and 65 cents or whatever it is, it's really high. Um, so they penalize us for using uh, electricity during peak times and they incentivize us for using electricity at off peak or super off peak time. So um, it, it really hasn't impacted our lifestyle other than I do things a little differently um, as far as loads of laundry or in, in this case of charging a car, I've always charged it at 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, so that nothing's changed there, but the load of laundry, that probably is the biggest thing. And then tonight I ended up cooking some stuff in the oven. Unfortunately, that was uh, right before this show. That was probably 4.30, 5 o'clock. So I was probably using, you know, loads of energy then when I probably shouldn't have, but we had to make dinner. So, um, yeah, that's how it's impacting us. Um, I don't know what they're doing upstairs. They might be watching the show on the big screen TV, sucking the energy out of the grid. <laughs> Just like your families, right? They're probably watching this stream right now, right at, at home? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. I got uh, one that's probably not sucking right now. power out of the grid, so <laughs> not here anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that's so so that hopefully answers that question. That's how it impacts us. That's a great question. Um, somebody asked this question. I don't have the answer to it, but they said, "What about road noise? I hate road noise in the Model Three. So what about road noise for the Fisker Ocean?" Well, I mentioned earlier, none of us have test driven the electric vehicle uh, that that's actually on. Uh, you know on this, this show right now, probably people that are in the chat, probably never test driven the electrical vehicle. Maybe there's somebody from Fisker watching that might have test driven it. So we don't know what the, the, the road noise is gonna be at this time. Um, I haven't seen whether or not there's double pane glass on the Fisker Ocean. Does anyone know, have you guys seen picture, up close pictures of that? I know the Tesla no. Model 3 kind of has like, well, a, I believe it's double pane glass, right? They That's added like that two. recently, yeah. In the last okay. couple of years, they added that, and it does help. It does help noise. Yeah. Another I thing don't is notice tires. Road noise. Yeah, I don't yeah. notice road noise in in our Tesla Model Three. I'm maybe I'm not super picky, or I don't I, I don't 
Mine's yeah, an older one, and I do notice it. So yeah. okay. So yeah. So I don't hear it in ours. Is a 2021, um, and it does have what appears to be that double that double pane glass. I don't know what Fisker's going to offer. They haven't given details um, around the glass, and I haven't seen the Fisker Ocean uh, with the window rolled down where you can actually see the the edge of the glass. Um, I haven't seen any photos of that or video. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know how to answer that other than no one's test driven it. We'll get back to you um, when we test drive the Fisker Ocean. Um, maybe the company will invite us to go test drive it over in Graz, Austria later this year when other journalists and media and analysts get to, to, to test drive it. That would be fabulous. I would be so excited to do that. Um, so that would be fun. Uh, let's go to the next question here, if there is another question. Uh, scrolling down, I don't see too many more. Um, somebody asked about the canoe. Yeah, that's a van. Um, XT, they're chatting about the cars when we were talking about all the different cars. And we have one last one here, Hammer Time, and maybe we've already answered it. Um, what do you expect the pricing will be for the exterior paint and interior sea salt upgrades for the Ultra and Extreme? Possibly similar to Genesis GV60 upgrade prices. So off the top of my head, I don't know what the upgrade prices are of the Genesis GV60. Um, I would say the paint, and, and Matt, you might have a better guess than myself. I would say the paint, I would, I would... I actually wrote an article about feature upgrades and I actually talked specifically about the paint and I pulled the model uh, from what Tesla has provided. So Tesla gives two colors away for free right now. That happens to be their white and their gray. They then charge for the additional colors like I think they charge an additional thousand dollars for their blue. Uh, and then they charge something else for another color. And I think I want to say like the red color is like two grand or somewhere there. It's 1500 now or something. Yeah. Okay. It has dropped, I think. Okay. It has dropped. So, so yeah, so, so I would use that probably as a, as an indicator of what the paint could, could cost. I know there was a, a conversation going on in the chat a couple of weeks ago around paint costs or, or cost to, to upgrade paint. And people were saying in Europe, they wouldn't expect to pay. Um, to upgrade their paint color. Um, whereas here in the United States, companies are charging now to upgrade paint colors and they've been doing it for a while. So it's kind of common practice here, but I guess in Europe, I've never bought my car in Europe, but from our European friends who were staying up super late, they said that actually costs, um, you know, it doesn't cost them anything for upgrading the paint color. Um, back in the day, you know, I when, when people did not buy cars online and weren't able to configure them online, I'm, I'm trying to remember, like I bought a black, um, uh, like, I bought in a couple of cars brand new, one of which was a 2000 Ford Expedition that I bought 22 years ago. And I don't recall the paint being an additional cost, um, but maybe, maybe they've always been putting the paint color as an upcharge on the sticker price. I'm not sure. I can't remember back to when I bought a new car. Do you guys, you know, if you remember back to when you bought a brand new car that was not purchased online, direct from, you know, the manufacturer. Did you get an upcharge back in the day for, for your paint color? Um, I believe, usually it was small. Like, usually it was like yeah, five it was small, or under dollars. 500, I thought, right? Yeah. Sometimes okay. just a few hundred dollars. Somewhere in that range. Got it. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually personally bought too many brand new cars. I've only bought, and I want to say two cars that have been totally brand new. Um, that being that Ford X 2000 Ford Expedition, and then most recently the 2021 Tesla Model 3. All the other cars that I've owned in my lifetime, which I want to say it's like 10 or 11, maybe 12, um, have been used. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So who knows what the cost of paint is um, <laughs> other than what I, what I got for free with the Tesla, right? I got the free white option. Um, and I'm happy with the white option. I like I like the white, the white paint. That's the color that I chose with the... Fisker Ocean is the, the great white in gloss. I think that'll be a nice color. Um, so, so, Rosanna, yeah, so that's, uh, Rosanna said uh, place, places like Walmart and Starbucks should have EV charging stations. Um, now, e Electrify America, most of the places where they're at is in Walmart and Targets. Um, that hmm. is their primary thing because um, they figure if you're going to charge that you can go in and shop and i'm sure walmart and target probably have 
some type of um, thing, you know, they've probably done a lot of research and found out that the, you spend a certain amount of time inside the store, you're most likely to buy something. So they probably figured it's great for them because most of the time they're going to be charging for a half an hour. Or so if you're going to be walking in the store that long, you're probably going to buy something. And so this probably works out great for them. Um, now they don't have, yes, they don't have as much as they could. Um, but a lot of people, especially if you have never had an EV before, don't realize how many charger stations, how many charging stations there actually are out there. And that's not including Tesla superchargers. If you just look at Electrify America, Charge Point, there's a lot of them out there and there's more than what you think. And I know a lot of people that I talk to, I, they ask me, well, where are the chargers at? And I tell them, they got one in Springfield, there's one in Bloomington, there's one outside um, Effingham at the um, Firefly Grill. And they're like, really? I didn't know they were there because you're not looking for them. You don't realize that they're yeah. there. They're at the back one, of a one parking thing, lot and, you know. So. One app that Matt and I talked about a couple of weeks back was PlugShare. Yep. Yeah. And Matt's been using it for a long time. PlugShare is really a free good. app that you can download. And it's worth downloading before you, you take delivery of your Fisker Ocean. You can download it today. Type in your zip code or allow. If you're on your phone, you can allow uh, access to your, your location. And you'll see all the, the charging stations yeah. around you. There's probably a ton that you didn't even know were there, like you just mentioned, uh, Jim. They, so download they might be level twos, but you know, yeah, they, that's still good. Um, but yeah, yeah I, and and this is for plug share. Um, there's a charge point charger at the hospital down in St. Louis at Barnes um, Hospital, and it doesn't show up on the charge point app. But it did show up on PlugShare. That's the only way that I found out that the charger was there. So PlugShare is really good, and it's and people keep you generally keep that updated and kind of let you know, hey, th there's four here, but only two of them are working or whatever. And you usually you see when people have checked in and the prices and everything. It's a real good app. Yeah, and and Tomasa just mentioned ABRP. Um, I think you mentioned that one as well, uh, Matthew. That one yep. is uh, a better quite a route cool planner. app as well. Yeah. Yep, a better route planner. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. That was pretty neat. Um, so yeah, those are some some cool apps for people to check out for the people who are still watching. We have seventy six people. If you haven't already subscribed to our channels, there's three of us here. Subscribe to the Fisk Garage channel, the OSR Garage channel, and the Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger. And I'm going to make a plug here for Matthew. He's wearing his cool new hat with a new logo on it. Um, it says Ocean Views. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a neat thing that he's going to announce soon. Um, stay tuned. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? Not too many more questions there. There was something I, oh, I got an email forwarded to me that was from somebody who's watching right now. And uh, he said that, hey, um, I have proof here. Check the email below. It's from corporate on sitting in the Fisker Ocean in San Diego. And the email basically says, um, we will allow reservation holders to sit in the car. Please be mindful. This is a gentle prototype and not all features or buttons work. Um, and then they basically said the, ne the next line, they said, also, we're providing 25% off discount for entry to the event. Um, if people, uh, basically, they give the code. Um, we, we've written about that. If you want the 25% off code, just type in um, uh, Fully Charged San Diego, click the article and the links there, and you can use the 25% off code. Um, that's great, because we offered, uh, we, Fiskarati, I reached out and they gave me a 15% off code, but Fisker has a 25% off code. That's, <clears throat> that's better if you didn't get complimentary tickets. They gave away complimentary tickets on Friday. What? That was pretty cool. Um, and that was the first time I've seen that. So they, you know, they ended up giving away complimentary tickets. They sold out pretty quick though. Um, we posted on the Fiskarati forums and uh, a couple of people told us that they got them from there. Um, we posted, I think, in them the, the link on, on Twitter as well as stock twits and a couple of people told us they got them there. So congrats to the people that saved, uh, you know, 40 bucks a ticket. Um, so that was pretty neat. Uh, 40 bucks, I think, 40, 40 bucks for a day, $50 for the weekend, and then children are free. I can't remember what the age is. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the Fully Charged Live in San Diego this 
weekend. So we'll see everybody there who, who goes. Um, maybe we'll do a, a live stream from the event. Um, a couple of people told us to take photos and videos of underneath the seats. <laughs> we still haven't seen any of those. I, you know, who knows if that's going to be interesting. I don't think there's much space under there, but we'll take those. I think it was Rosanna on here wanted to wanted to see that. Um, but we'll take we'll try to take some photos. We, we, we know what we've seen and we'll try to do some stuff that we haven't seen uh, to, to make it interesting. And uh, hopefully it's a car that we haven't seen. Hopefully it's the solar orange car. Um, that'll be neat. So so I think uh, do we have any other questions? So what do you think about the UI so far? We don't we haven't seen too much about the UI yet. We've seen we've shared a couple images of from the investor presentation. Uh, and then there was a short, maybe 10 second clip that Henrik posted of him playing around with um, some of the media buttons. Um, aside from that, we haven't seen too much, so too hard to provide an opinion on that. But I, you know, I have high expectations and we'll see, uh, we'll see how the company does. I used to be in the software, I still do a lot of software development and, and product management. So um, that's kind of where I, I play. So when I see things not working on the Fisker website, it just bothers me being a Fisker investor as well as a Fisker Ocean One and a Fisker Ocean Sport pre-orderer. Um, it drives me crazy. So I, I send that feedback where I write about it and it is what it is. So hopefully they, you know, they said they're they're going to fix some of the stuff. So excited that they're they're working on it, and we'll share more details. But yeah, the UI. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. The UI. Don't know much about it other than what I just shared. Um, I expect it to be great, though. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. And I think that might be. Oh, we got another question. Geez, they keep rolling in here. Last question. Okay, for those getting an Ocean One. Oh, this isn't. This is. I guess maybe just for everybody. What color? interior wheel choices etc should you strongly consider because they are up charges <clears throat> for others well we know a couple things we know the um we know the malibu was supposed to be a signature feature on the fisker ocean one so that's a signature feature um will there be an upcharge for that for others well, i would say probably yes if it was a signature feature maybe it won't be available but Anyhow, that's that's one I could think of. The other one was the slipstream wheel at one point, um, but I, I remember a tweet coming out on Twitter about the slipstream, the the 22 inch F3 slipstream, and Fisker themselves said, "Did you hear the news? The slipstream is going to be available on all vehicles as probably an upgrade option." But they did that. We wrote an article about it to document it, uh, and that kind of baffled me. I thought, "Oh wow, I thought that was going to be just for the the Fisker Ocean One and the Extreme, but." I guess that's going to be on everything. So if I, you know, that, those are the only two that I can think of. Um, colors wise, Big Sur Blue, um, I, is that, I, I've totally lost track. Is that going to be specifically to the, to the Ocean? I know it's a launch color. It's, it's for all of them. Uh, yeah. For all Henrik, of them. Uh, okay. he, he tweeted, not tweeted, but he did Instagram the, that it would be uh, for all For things. everything. Got it. So that would be a premium feature, I would imagine, being a matte color. Matte paint would, would probably cost more than non-matte paint. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, if you go go for all the, yeah, you want to have all the best stuff, you're going to be able to find out at, in, at the end of October with the configurator what things are going to cost. That's going to be our moment of truth. We'll be able to update lots of information on the Fiskarati site, um, knowing what the exact features are for each trim, what the upgrades are going to be, all the costs and all that fun stuff. So good times to come. That's probably less than, definitely less than two months away. So there you have it, everybody. That was your Fiskarati Live for the day and all things Fisker. We did it. It's been done. We've talked all about all the latest stuff since last Wednesday. I want to thank uh, Jim from OSR Garage. I want to thank you, Matthew, from Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger. And uh, thank you all for, for tuning in. For the 84 people that are here still watching us, have a good night. And we'll see you again next week.